Hello, Dots and Truck Lovers. Today we have a, my first resin model by uh, Stance Hunters. I don't really have too many Stance Hunters, Stance Hunters in general. But this is a Nissan Sunny Truck, or a Datsun Sunny Truck, as it was called back back in the day. Uh, again, I don't know if it's licensed. I do feel, I have a suspicion, really old classic cars don't need to be licensed uh, because so many people seem to do it. Uh, Stance Hunters, I think, was a legitimate company. Well, anyways, I don't know. We're going to check this out. Wikipedia tells me that the Datsun Sunny truck was based off of the first generation Nissan Sunny van, or station wagon as Westerners would call it. And uh, so it would have like a one liter four cylinder engine. And uh, I guess that's it. <laughs> it's just a small, small pickup truck. There's not much else to it. Uh, some accessories here. Mm, we'll take a look at those in a moment. Yeah, we'll do that after. So we have a nice photo etch uh, metal plate here. Really strong etching. Like that, the thickness of that letter is pretty crazy. So they etched that a lot. Seems like this uh, livery, there's around, around 200 of them. And uh, it's got a nice base. It's not just smooth. It's got a texture to it. Kind of like like blue jeans or something but it's nice it's not really reflective you know so you can focus on the model itself uh those mirrors sketch me out i would debate but there's some cool stuff it looks like going on underneath that thing uh eh, watch me destroy this model i'll probably end up dropping it but uh let's take a look here that's weird there's two different screws this is a big flange screw and this one just doesn't have it You know what? Let's just do something first. I'm going to look at the bottom first and then put it back. So that's an interesting construction. There's literally four screws, two in the front, but what's holding the back in place? And let's just hit it under there. So if you love looking at your models upside down, uh, I guess this is a good one to get. Look how bad the front tires are crushed, though. I really wish they wouldn't crush these things. Look at that. That's It looks like it has a flat tire. Not a... Uh, not just weight of the car it's literally <laughs> that's not good man that is not good all right well anyways a lot of cool details i like how they have the the cage going around the spare wheel and that spare wheel is chromed out and it actually has tread as well so that that's a treaded spare tire very cool all right let me put this back on the stand hold on just some random images that looks yeah, the front end on that one looks stock, but it's got custom wheels. This one just looks like it has custom wheels. It's got the same fender mirrors there. Um, lowered quite a bit as well, like this model. This looks like a totally stock image, obviously, being black and white. So it has like these rubber bumperettes on the corners, like this surround going around there. And I believe it actually has it on this model, so that's good. I, I thought they would have maybe gotten rid of the rubber bumperettes because they're kind of ugly looking. Uh, and then here it is uh, next to a van. So I guess they're sharing the same platform. Makes sense, right? They just got rid of the back roof. All right, let's get back to this. I took a Q-tip and took my fingerprints off because that stuff, I guess, will stay forever. So yeah, as you can see, it is a custom slammed uh, thing. Unfortunately, the tire, it looks horrible because it crushed the front tire too much. The rear's fine. Uh, this one also has a chin spoiler as well. Let's get it on that mini. It's a uh, probably a Watanabe F8 wheel, but I call them mini lights because uh, I used to have a Mini Cooper. Uh, anyways, uh, there's, it looks like there's a brake back there, but I have a suspicion it might be part of this wheel casting because it looks like it's white there. Yeah, so maybe this is white plastic that's chromed. What's going on here? That that brake looks better. I think there's a caliper there, or, or I don't know if there's a caliper. It's hard to say. It all looks the same silver, right? But the brake disc is back there. It's, it's definitely far behind. I just can't tell if it's... I think it is part of the same, uh, the wheel. See, so you can see this horrible, horrible gap. So... Stance hunters, you gotta train your people or whoever makes your models. You gotta train your people not to torque these things down so much. A smart brand would actually have spacers. That's what's missing here. There's no spacer. 
you know, that keeps this thing from getting crushed so much. So that's pretty basic, actually. If they actually bought someone else's models, they would have realized how simple a solution there could be. All right, uh, well, one thing that I am liking, it looks like a tampo print. I don't, well, maybe this is a decal. That looks wrinkly like a decal, but the white here is paint. It's, it looks like the same smoothness as the red. Uh, and then the blue, I'm sure, is paint as well. So maybe it's just this red thing. The waviness looks like a decal. Maybe this black text. I don't know. I can't see any white border around it, though. You know, I can't see the clear border around this as much either. So maybe that is a tampo print. All right, uh, the front amber light reflector thingy, my Bob. Probably a reflector. It's got a little silver, so that's nice. I do feel it's crooked, though. It's too bad. The I like the mirrors. You know, a lot of companies won't put mirrors on. Unfortunately, there's a little extra plastic flash there. You might want to take, like, a clipper or maybe, like, a jewelry file, too. Or just do that. And then it's nice that they have some silver behind it. Oh, boy. But look, I just touched it, and it so you don't want to touch the paint because that's paint and soft for some reason. That's strange. The front end looks pretty nice. Now this has psychedelic headlights. I've seen stuff like this before, like on the ignition model, uh, Hakusuka. But the ignition model ones look pretty horrible. These don't look as bad, as as. but I do feel maybe it's unnecessary. Uh, I've never seen a light bucket or the glass of an old headlight have uh, a, like a checkerboard pattern. They're usually some verticals, a little horizontal, you know, but it's not a consistent pattern. It's nice that they put something there, I guess. It's better than just having one dot, maybe. Or maybe not, I don't know. You'll have to look at some headlight photos and decide for yourself. Uh, the issue is, because it is a checkerboard pattern, this one's crooked. And it's very easy to see that. This one's a little more horizontal. So, okay, well, the grill here has got some uh, texture, painted black, very nice. This seems to be some sort of badge here in the middle. Let's zoom in. Yeah, I am zoomed in all the way four times. I guess it's just an S for Sunny, like the license plate. So it is cool that the license plate has that. And that looks like a decal because you can see the border around the letters, right? But it is fine there. Um, the chrome looks pretty nice here as well. The separate bumper is chromed plastic. It looks like there's some inserted uh, reflector bits. Yeah, it seems like a separate piece. But down here, it's just a recess, no extra paint, but that's fine. I mean, the real car, there wouldn't be black paint down there. So it just looks dark, uh, as it should. This is a really bright LED booth, by the way, so that shows a lot of stuff that isn't, yeah. Yeah, hopefully you understand what I'm saying. Uh, chin spoiler looks pretty nice. The sky blue up here looks pretty nice. A little bit of a divot there. Hmm, I really think they must polish these things. Anyways, some ribbing there. I'm not sure why there would be a bump here. It's purposely there, I mean, Oh, maybe there's just a single fluid ejector, and it's here. So maybe there's two nozzles or something for the f wiper fluid. The wipers are separate pieces, painted black, very nice. I think they're perpendicular to the windscreen, pretty much. So that's good. This side here, yeah, again, that, that reflector looks a little bit crooked. Hmm, interesting. You notice that license plate is very thin. It's probably a photo etched piece of metal painted black. All right. Oh, I didn't even notice on the other side, but there's something here. I feel like it says sunny. Yeah, it does. It's just covered with black down there for some reason. The door handle sticking out painted silver. But then what is this thing? It's a d silver and a dot. I feel like they did it twice. Give me a second here. What? <laughs> oh, I think I now know what's going on. Is this a decal I'm touching? Look, I think that's an air pocket. So what I... Well, 
I don't know. I also feel there might be a fuel filler right here, but the decal's covering it up. Yeah, see, there's something there. So this is why I don't like decals. What I have, what I think is going on now in this body is they painted it red, they masked it off, painted it blue, or vice versa, and there's an ugly paint streak somewhere underneath this white decal. This white decal is covering up where the blue meets the red. Ideally, it would just be paint, right? I mean, you can see now how that gap is covered by the decal, which is really unrealistic, so it's not, not nice to look at. All right, the side window here, it has a uh, packaging thin plastic, the blackouts on the back side, and there's a chrome molding around it. And this look, see? This is why stickers, decals, all that stuff, it's not cool. I mean, that's... You can't get super chrome though with paint, but I would rather have a silver molding that doesn't flop in the wind uh, than that thing. So that's that's not good. Yeah, see, look at that. You can just see the gappiness there. Here it's much better. Okay. Hmm. All right, going around to the back. So we have some exposed hinges here. Uh, the exhaust is nice. It's just a cut-off metal tube. There's a little like, depth going on there. The license plate is great again. Uh, the text is well done because it's a decal, but it could have been well done in the paint as well, I think. So, yeah, air pockets and all that stuff. The taillights, I think, are transparent. But there's black painted on them, silver painted on them. Uh, but I think the orange is transparent. So you see here, the black is showing through. The decal is covering up this. So again, this is why decals are not cool. Ah, oh, man. All right, the bed here looks nice enough. Some sort of access hatch there. They actually have the corrugation on the side in the back and the door, the tailgate. You'll notice this is canted. That's an interesting thing. Uh, I, I, I see that in the rear photograph as well, so it is accurate. What I don't know is how do they mold this? How do they mold all these lines inside the bed? That's great detail, but you'll notice it. I, th I don't know how they got that in there. You know, let's see. It would take a very intricate mold to make this because this is all recessed here. That might be vertical. Yeah, and again, these are recessed into the door. So it's very realistic. It's just a mystery as to how they do it. Okay, well, going back to this ugly molding side, we can see the interior. That door panel looks great. You got a silver door handle, the wind-down window thing. Uh, I bet a lot of you guys have never been in a car without wind-down windows, right? Because I think... These are pretty common, even on the cheapest cars now, having power windows. For some reason, I can't see this side of the vehicle. Let's get the flashlight. It's nice that it's got a rear window, which, by the way, has blackout printing. So the steering wheel looks great. It's like brown rim, maybe like a silver middle. And then you can clearly see the instruments there in the uh, instrument cluster area. Uh, it's like a, I don't know, HVAC controls there. I think this flashlight's too bright. Let's go, well, unfortunately it's one lumen or 15 lumens. Well, I guess one is better. All right. Maybe there are vents or something there. I'm not sure. Let's try, uh, boy, hold on. Yeah, hold, switch this, hit focus again, and then try to get in on that. Oh, yeah, I like the two-tone effect on the seats. There's a shifter right there. Okay, so I see a shifter. There's an e-brake now. I'm noticing that. It's hard to see that stuff before because it's black. I think I'm going to have to boost this up to 15 lumens. Oh, the rear view mirror. Didn't even notice that before. And... I'm sure it's painted silver on the back side. Yeah, I guess that's silver. 
I don't see any seatbelt buckles, but I don't think people in the this time frame were wearing seatbelts anyways. <laughs> Not sure if I mentioned uh, this pickup truck debuted in 1967. That's the first of the sunny pickup trucks. Well, that leaves these things here. And all these little gimmicks. I would just rather have a nicer base truck than uh, all these weird props. Yeah, there's plenty of props you can buy. Uh, you know, now with 3D printing, and they're not even expensive. So this looks like an air conditioner, uh, like a swamp cooler. Let's see, there's not there's missing paint there, so it's not even a good prop. And this is another one. Okay. This uh, little dolly, it's nice. Looks like it's stamped steel with the handle, casters. All right. And then this is, looks like one of those air cons, a Mitsubishi air conditioner that fits inside of a window. But the back doesn't look realistic. And this looks like a one you'd put on a wall indoors. All right, so I'm not sure. <laughs> like, like, see, I could understand having one, but like, you're who's gonna do this? So I guess if you want to get all those in there and have the police stop you in the 164 scale world, you can do it. But I guess really it's just more like a diorama. But these things are resin, right? So I don't know if... Are people really making dioramas with resin models? Eh, maybe they are. So it's, I guess you'd want to make like a diorama of an air conditioner shop and... Uh, have these just sitting in the showroom or something but again for me I feel like I would just rather have a cheaper model or a model that doesn't have that that's just better right maybe better quality control and better design decisions All right, this next one is a TLV, but this is not a Sunny pickup. It's just a regular pickup, which I think is based off the Bluebird, the the 510 or the 410. Uh, so, anyways, it just says on the bottom, uh, that's in truck, and uh, that's some sort of Bridgestone tire truck. So it came with three tires. All right, let's make a. Look. of the Hakatora truck. Basically it's like a Datsun truck with the front end of a Hakosuka Skyline. And it's got this Advan livery. And yeah, I think this might have decals too. I think it's a black painted truck and then this red stuff in the back is a decal. So in 064 using decals as well. It's not cool. Not good. So as much as I like bashing on TLV, TLV doesn't use decals. 
all this stuff is paint. <laughs> the problem with TLV is that it, TLVs love getting paint rash. So <laughs> I'm not sure which is which is the better. A paint rash car or a, a decaled car? It's <laughs> you guys make a comment uh, what what you would take. Okay, well, Stance Hunters, uh, right now today the model is okay, the, but I know in the future uh, this is going to be a problem. Uh, I feel like that window trim might fall off. The decal is going to crack, over, especially over the where the air gaps are it just doesn't look nice all right so you're gonna have to come up with a really cool looking resin model for me to buy your stuff again uh, i might buy your die casts but uh i don't know about this stuff so it wasn't on the super high end of pricing for resin models but uh i think it could have been cheaper if you didn't include all this garbage and it yeah the truck. I think what I have to learn to do is to start avoiding when it comes. 